Hello everyone, today I am going to be sharing with you how to sew a welt pocket. This tutorial is specifically regarding my new Nita trousers pattern, but you can use this tutorial with any pattern that uses the same welt pocket method. Now at this point, you should have your back piece with your darts sewn and you should already have your interfacing um, ironed to the back of the pant with your welt marked on the interfacing. When you're ironing this interfacing to the back pant, the bottom line should line up with the marking from the pattern, the line on the pattern piece for the back pant. So the bottom line of your welt marking is going to go on the bottom line of the pant. And you press that on before you iron your darts. I've also already marked the welt on my lining piece. And also on our pocket lining, the facing piece is already sewn on. Now, in this case, if you are using the same fabric for your pocket lining as for your pants, you don't really need this welt facing piece. It's mostly for um, whenever your pocket is sort of pulling open and it will keep any contrasting lining from showing if your pocket is pulling open. But if the fabric is the same, you don't really need it. I went ahead and stitched one on for this example. And then of course we have our welt pocket piece. Uh, just for fun and for a little bit of contrast in this video, I'm sewing a contrasting welt pocket. So that should be a fun little feature and I thought it would be easier to see what's going on in the video. So the first thing we are going to do is we have our lining piece facing right side up and you want to put your pant piece, your pant leg, and line up. You want the wrong side of the pant leg to be on top of the right side of the lining piece. So you're going to be looking at the right side of both of those. And then we want the wrong side of the welt piece to be facing up, up and the right side of the welt goes to the right side of the pants. And our goal is to line up this bottom line with the bottom line here and our bottom line on the lining piece. Now I like to use pins and I start in the corners of my welt piece. I poke a hole through and then I want to go in and find the corner of my pants piece and I want to match that with the corner of my lining piece and I'm going to straighten all that up okay let's make sure everything is flat and straight and I am going to stick that through there and in general your the top of your pants is going to line up with the top of the pocket lining. So I'm going to repeat that on the other corner. Matching up all the corners using my pins and then sort of straightening it all out before I stick my pin through. 
Now, generally, if you have both corners matched up, you should be good to go. If you want to be safe, you can stick a pin through the middle of the line. Look on the inside here and make sure you're on that line. And then on the back, make sure you are going through that line. And then make sure everything lays nice and flat. You don't want any puckers other than your darts on your pants. So back here we have some rippling. You want to make sure that's flattened out. There we go. Everything should be laying flat. And now you are going to stitch across the bottom line and the top line. We are leaving the two short ends unstitched and it's very important that you go exactly to the corner of your square. You don't want to go past it or before it. In order to have a nice crisp looking welt, you want to go right to the corners and back stitch. Okay, so we have stitched our bottom two welt lines. Those are looking really good. Now we want to um, cut through our welt. Now this part can be a little scary, um, but it is important to do it correctly in order to get, again, a really nice crisp looking welt. So the first thing you wanna do is draw a line down the center of the welt. So measure how long, how wide your welt is. Ours is half an inch. So we are going to draw a line a quarter of an inch from the bottom line there. And you can just use pencil. Um, this side is not going to be visible from your the out, like any inside or outside of your garment. Um, next thing we're going to do is from the end of your stitching, you are going to draw a line a half an inch in to the inside of the welt. Again, from the end of our stitching, half an inch in. And now for the scary part, uh, what we are going to do is we are going to cut this middle line open, straight down the middle line to these points. And from these points, we're going to cut at an angle from this point to the end of the stitching um, on each side, bottom and top. So how I recommend you start is fold your welt in half. Make sure you don't have anything in there that's not supposed to be in there. Give it a little snip. You're going to be cutting through all three layers. Again, you want to hold your pants out of the way because you don't want to accidentally snip anything you're not supposed to snip. So we're just going to cut right down this middle line to this point here. And then we're going to go diagonally to that stitch point there. The crisper and closer this is to your stitch point without going through, the nicer your welt is going to look. We're going to go in the other direction. I still get nervous doing this, even though I've done it so many times before. So now we have our pocket opening. And what we want to do is fold everything to the inside. Pull it through 
to the inside and we want to press it so that we have a nice crisp rectangle opening. Now how I recommend you do that is you fold one side down and press this seam allowance open just like you would with any seam first and then press it up so you'll get a nice crisp edge between the two layers. Same with the bottom. Press this seam allowance open first and then press it down. And you can even do that on the sides as well with your little triangle seam allowances here. So let's give that a good press and see what it looks like. All right, this is how your welt should look once it is pressed. We have a nice crisp rectangle. And if you turn it to the front, we aren't seeing any of our welt from the front of the garment. So the next thing we are going to do, I am going to now again press this bottom piece up. Okay, we're going to press this up and then we are going to fold the top down so that the top of our fold meets the top of our opening here. So if you have a wobbly fabric like this, you wanna make sure that it's making a straight line and the top of our fold is going to meet the rectangle opening like so. So press up and then press down. So I have pressed up and then pressed down and you can see if I flip this over, I'm starting to have a nice looking welt here. You wanna look out for any sort of um, bunching in the corners. You want to go and make sure to press that out and that is caused here. So I'm gonna give that a fix before I move on. But I will tell you the next step. We are going to pull away the welt away from the lining piece. And as you can see, y'all have to excuse my band-aid. <laughs> I had a, not a sewing injury, a cooking injury. Um, we're going to pull away the welt from the lining in the pants. And we are going to stitch across the short end of the welt, closing that up across the little triangle seam allowance we have here. Again, you wanna get as close into that stitching. You don't wanna catch any of this folded stuff but you do wanna get as close to those welt corners as possible. And we are going to do that on both sides of our welt. Okay, now from the front, you should have something that looks like this. And from the back, you should have a nice looking stitch on either side that connects those triangle seam allowances. And this is not stitched through the lining, through the front pants, just through the in between, you're stitching in between the lining and the welt, catching those little triangles. Now the next thing you want to do is fold your pants out of the way. So this is our, our pants side, and we are going to stitch the bottom of the welt down to secure it to the lining piece, just across the top of the serging there. All right, at this point, if you were doing a button and buttonhole on your welt, this is when you would want to do it. I am not doing a button and buttonhole on these. Um, however, 
if you wanted to, what you would do is you would mark your buttonhole in the center of your welt. This welt is five inches wide. So we would want to mark our buttonhole at two and a half inches. And you want that welt to be about a quarter inches below your welt. And you want it to be However, this chalk is not really sharp enough to be doing this. Um, you want it to be an eighth of an inch longer than your button. So if we're making, get using half an inch button, I'm going to make a five eighths inch buttonhole. And that is where I would stitch my buttonhole through all of the layers of our lining and our welt. You may catch some of this welt in with the buttonhole. And then after you've stitched your buttonhole, you would then fold up the lining to match at the top edge. And through the hole of your buttonhole, you would mark the placement for your button on the inside of your lining. So I don't have a buttonhole because we're not making one. So my buttonhole, my button would end up being about right there. And that is where you would stitch your button. Um, moving on though, since we are not doing a button on these particular pants, and I do have tutorials for buttons and buttonholes, um, which I will link down below if you are interested in how to do that. So our next step is to sew our lining together. We want to pull our lining through to the right side of the pants. It's gonna be a little awkward. Don't stress too much about if it feels weird or looks weird, because it will look weird. So we are pulling the lining all the way through and we are going to stitch, this would be the right sides together of your lining down either side, just stitching the li pocket lining pieces down the side seams of the pocket lining. And this is going to be a quarter of an inch seam allowance down either side. Okay, so we have stitched the pocket piece um, right sides together. And now we want to clip our corners. And we are going to push that back through the back line, the back, um, back to the wrong side of the pants. And again, this might look a little crazy. So now, We can reach through the top and make sure our corners are poked through really nice. So now this is the view from the wrong side, the inside of the pants. And I'm gonna give this a good press first because you want that seam to be right on the edge so I'm going to give it a good press and then I'm going to stitch another quarter inches down either side. Okay, so this is how your welt should be looking on the inside of the pants. We have our lining closed in real beautifully and on the front you have a nice crisp welt when you open it up. You should see that welt facing on the inside. 
if you did a button and buttonhole, you would have a buttonhole with a perfectly lined up button right here. And we are pretty much done. We have one more step, which is to secure the top of the welt. And we are going to do that by folding down the top of the pants and stitching in the ditch right here along this seam. That will secure your welt at the top. As you can see right now, we can open up the whole top of the welt. It's just gonna give you a much stabler, cleaner looking welt pocket. So again, folding down the top of the pants and stitching across this seam here. All right, now we have completed a welt pocket. I love the way the contrast looks. As you can see, we are now secure to the welt to the inside of the um, welt lining. We've got some good space in here for our hands. And I went ahead and stay stitched the top of the pant to the welt pocket. And if you happen to have any extra pocket lining sticking up above your pants, that is totally fine, but you want to go ahead and trim it off so that when you're attaching your waistband, your seam allowance is all lined up. And that is how you make a welt pocket. Thank you so much for joining me on this tutorial today. And if you have any specific questions or need any extra help, don't hesitate to ask me in the comments below or shoot me an email. Thanks so much for joining me for this tutorial. I look forward to providing more tutorials for this particular pattern and of course, any future techniques. Happy sewing everyone. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you learned something today. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below if there are any other tutorials you would like to see in the future. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my future videos by clicking this button right here. And you can check out my other tutorials in my tutorial playlist right here. I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.